the first thing more important to me than the micro placer is getting those cows onto farm, right? Whether they're going to come from a, a mart uh, or going to be coming directly from another, another farm. But the main thing is, is in terms of feeding a milk replacer is the first feed and not in, in general overdoing the level of feeding that takes place in that first feed. Uh, the calves have traveled a long distance. What's more important than the end of the milk replacer is that rehydration of those calves and giving those calves uh, a chance just to settle down over the stress factor of over a long journey. Whereas again, if they're coming directly off a, a local dairy farm or a couple of dairy farms, you'll have a certain amount of mixing of calves. But on top of that, you'll also have where calves may be being fed high volumes of whole milk and you're going to be adjusting to a different type of, of diet. So the whole thing, in, in my book anyway, is most important is that to let things settle down. If it's a long distance, give them a, some form of electrolyte but the whole thing is just to give the cows a chance to recuperate. Uh, after that, in terms of milk replacer, generally they'll be coming off farms, again, depending on whether they're going to be 10 or 12 days old or whether they're going to be three weeks. Uh, some cows could be on different feeding systems, bucket teeth systems, ad lib systems, um, some getting proper whole milk, some getting waste milk. So you'll have a big variation in some on milk replacer. But the main thing is, in my book, is, is not to overfeed for the first couple of feeds, start them off easy enough. At, two to two and a half litres morning and evening. Um, the more milk ingredients that are contained in that milk replacer itself, um, how digestible is a baby calf under four weeks of age doesn't have any great room and activity. So the more milk and milk products that are within that that milk replacer itself, the, the, the more importance it is to the baby calf. Um, but whatever with the milk ingredients, they have to be digestible to it. So I would say to you something in terms of milk replacer would be something that would be declaring somewhere in the order of 50-55% skim or else something that would be a whey protein concentrate type product. And when I mean whey protein, I mean something that's that's the likes of bodybuilders are using that's highly digestible, that's going to put muscle on, on that calf, that's going to develop frame onto that calf is what you're looking at. Um, after that, you're looking at a product that hasn't been denatured in the actual drying process. So you're looking for something that has a low ash content and also something below somewhere in the order about 7.5% ash and something as well that has a low fibre content would be an indicator that there's not a lot of vegetable protein in there. You can get plenty of protein in your milk replacer, but it may be a high veg level as opposed to a, a milk protein level. Um, after that, I'd say to you, you're having your, your levels of your vitamin A and your vitamin D in it, your good levels of vitamins, your lysine in, in the product as well, um, which is going to help again your, your leucine in terms of growth and also in terms of the immune system of the calf. In terms of mixing rates, what you're really trying to do is if you're taking whole milk, your whole milk will normally be 12.5% solids. So your calf milk replacer in general are made up at the same um, solid rate as what's in whole milk. So effectively what you're talking about is 125 grams of your milk powder plus 875 mils of water to give you one litre of mixed milk. They'll at least require three litres of what milk they get during the day just purely for maintenance to, to stay warm and basically um, to protect their immune system so that you don't end up uh, calves coming under disease pressure. Um, but after that, the rest is available for live weight gain. Basically, we're feeding at three litres morning and evening. We'd be trying to hit um, somewhere in the order of 0.8 of a kilo average daily gain over the first 10 weeks of that calf's life. Uh, if we get a very cold snap of weather, we do need to up feeding rates to try and keep our target uh, average daily gain at 0.8. Um, in terms of, of the weaning process after that, if you're talking about, uh, you'll be gradually reducing your, your volumes from, if you're on a twice a day bucket system, you'll be gradually reducing your, your um, from your three and a half litres morning and evening, um, back down to two and hoping that your, well, you won't be hoping your meal intake will start to, to increase. So we'll be weaning either for, for weight, which we expect to be somewhere in the order of eight, 85 kilos at our, our 10 week period or 85 to 90 kilos, or we're going to be weaning for, for age, which is 10 weeks itself, or we'll be weaning then in terms of the cows are taking in over a kilo of concentrate. So they'll be the, the type of three key factors we're looking for.